Hey, so I was doing a little reading recently and came across an article from the Financial Planning Association. It's written to uh, financial advisors in helping with um, clients enabling their children with, with, uh, with money, basically. Uh, and I thought I would link to that inside this video. So look in our uh, video notes here, you'll find a direct link to this article so you can read it for yourself. I'll just hit some highlights. Um, you know, occasionally you run across situations where uh, maybe children of clients aren't, uh, I hate to use the, this way, but aren't launching well, haven't made, maybe aren't making the best decisions for themselves. And you kind of wonder how that happens. How do successful uh, people have maybe mediocre to unsuccessful children, people who just can't find their way in life. And a lot of it has to do with these five things that the financial planning organization has uh, recognized through um, uh, psychologists, not, not just uh, planners, obviously, but a lot of psychologists chimed in on this article. Um, one is recognizing that, that uh, financial health can actually hurt a person. When you think about, um, you know, human beings have a natural tendency to seek pleasure and to avoid uh, pain when possible. It's just how we're created. So if there's no real pain points, then you tend to kind of maybe flander around and not find direction, right? So if I decide today I'm gonna go to the beach and hang out and not work, uh, then if there's no financial reason for me not to do that, then maybe that's what I'll do, where maybe a, a, in a normal situation where you're building something or working towards something, you say, man, if I just don't call in and I go to the beach today, then I might lose my job, which means I can't pay my bills, which creates pain, right? So it's less painful to go to work <laughs> than it is to, um, to have that, uh, uh, that, that freedom to just do whatever, whenever, uh, which brings to the second point of understanding that there is a curse sometimes of having too many options. Uh, the article talks about when someone has unlimited choices with regard to what he or she can do with their time, they become immobilized. Uh, basically, they sit around and comp uh, contemplate on what the meaning of life is and um, how to best discover themselves and try to figure out what their ideal career is, their ideal work environment, et cetera, when uh, in a normal situation, uh, they wouldn't have that financial aid or support. And so they <clears throat> quickly find something to be doing to earn income while they're also discovering probably those things at the same time. Um, also acknowledge that too much free time can also be a curse. So it turns out that when we go to work every day, uh, we actually have built in social interactions, goals, challenges, um, and then we get we have feedback mechanisms through our, uh, through our employment where in isolation, our minds tend to wander. We end up focusing on our problems, which leads to feelings of uneasiness and uh, un, uh, uh, lack, of, lack of direction at times. So again, uh, these are probably a little bit to the extreme. Uh, it's okay to have free time. It's okay to uh, take, take time off of work and do things. But if you're enabling a child by just giving them money and they're not really using that to create great opportunities for themselves and advance themselves or the family, um, then that could be part of the problem is that you have too much in terms of resources. Um, how do you make a change? Uh, every article that I found, including this one, says you have to rip the financial Band-Aid off. Uh, I witnessed this conversation recently at a horse event with my daughter where the mom was basically telling the daughter who's about to graduate college, who is going to medical school and she has a great, great path ahead of her, but she's saying, hey, dad and I aren't paying for this horse anymore after you graduate. And she seemed to take it really well, but there was a defined end. It was like, hey, horses go away upon graduation. You're on your own. Uh, and then so they started talking about, well, where's the horse go? I can't afford this horse during medical school. And they were kind of working out a plan on how to retire um, this horse in, into a retirement uh, type situation. So uh, that, that was a family, obviously, that had very good means, but basically was saying, hey, look, we're not gonna just support this um, forever. Uh, and horses, as we all know, can be very expensive. Um, the next thing basically is make a referral. Uh, that was option number five, is if you're in a situation where you feel like you need help, it, it might be a good time to talk to someone, maybe not necessarily a financial planner, but maybe more of a um, financial psychologist to help understand the purpose of family resources and what those, what those can be used for. We have a lot of podcasts and videos where we've talked about financial legacy and part of a legacy is telling a story. And you have to tell the story of how your family got to the position that it's in. 
and it's always, it's very rarely luck. It's a lot of it's just hard work and someone had a vision in the family. You have to keep telling that story so the next generation adopts it as part of their story as they're creating their, their own personal story as they go forward. Now, sometimes like uh, Rockefeller's son, Rockefeller's son didn't really wanna take up any of his dad's businesses. Um, he's really good at giving money away. And so he created uh, a lot of charities to the Rockefeller fortune um, that, that went out. So there, it doesn't mean that you have to uh, be successful at making more money necessarily, but just have a vision and a purpose. Um, again, another horse world example, there's, uh, there's a great rider in the country now whose parents own, uh, oh, I believe is a diamond mine. And she doesn't have to work, but she's found her passion. And now she's she brings in horses, she trains horses, she sells horses, and she has a chance of also being an Olympic rider in the upcoming uh, Olympics. Um, other, other examples are families like in the construction business who have um, uh, kids who have done other things, uh, charitable work or um, uh, work, you know, work around their passions. Uh, I know a lot of pilots that don't really have to work, but they love aviation and so they choose to fly for Delta American or I know one that flies corporate who doesn't have to work, but they found their passion and they have a purpose. That's what we want for all of our children to find their passion and purpose. But just make sure that the money that you're giving them isn't entitling them to do nothing basically. Um, if you ever want to have a dialogue about this, uh, I'm always open for those kind of conversations. Uh, but um, I can also point you to several books that we've read um, uh, in our studies on, on this topic. Thanks for watching.